Okay, we're gonna do some repelling, uh, how to tie off your ropes for repelling. Show you some different ways to do that and some knots. Um, I'll start off with these two right here. When you're repelling off a rope and you have your, uh, your repel rope, some people will have a knot already tied. And this is just a regular old bowling knot. And again, if you don't know how to tie these knots, you need to learn how to tie. I use these a lot with my horses. Basically, you lay it in your hand, you twist. Whatever I'm going to loop around here, that's my loop. So my knot here is going to be the rabbit comes out, up the hole, runs around the tree, and then back down the hole. And that's basically a bowling knot. And this knot is strong enough to repel off of. It's not going to slip. It's a good binding knot. How big I want to make my loop, depending on how big. I could make my loop smaller to set over this. So if I have a pole or a tree like this that I just want to throw it over, hook up, and then repel down, this is a quick way to do it. If I have a pole on the side like this that I want to hook up, I can throw this down, hook over, repel, and then when I'm on the bottom, I can get my rope back. So now, obviously, if I got this rope here and I know it slides this way, when I'm repelling, I don't want to be swinging out of here <laughs> doing this or it's not going to be good. So depending on whether you're going to leave your rope or you need your rope for your next repel is how you're going to get it off, etc. If your rope is long enough, then you can just double your rope and repel off a double, a double rope and repel like that. Most times I repel off a single rope. So again, if I, want, if I, if I want to have a pre-loop, then I tie my bowline up the hole, around a tree, down the hole. And I have my loop that I can put over something. However, if I have something like a tree, and I can't see the thing whether I'm in the tree. Let's say this is a tree here. Then I have to, when I tie my bowline, I get my end over here. I do my little twist. The rabbit's going to come up the hole, around a tree, and down a hole. But before I do that, I have to go around my tie point. So if this is a tree and I couldn't throw it over, I would wrap this around. And now I'm back to my same bowling. Up the hole, around the tree, the rabbit goes back down the hole, and now I have my bowling around a tree or an object that I can't go over. So I have to untie this afterwards. Now, when we're repelling in the military, we do what's called a safety line or a safety loop. So we, we, we put different type of uh, knots in there, and God, I haven't done this knot in a long time. But in the middle of a rope, you put what's called a butterfly. See if I can do this. If I remember this sucker. By gosh, I did. So let's call it a butterfly. I've done it not years. And what's good about this knot is when I get tension on this area right here, if I cut this rope, this knot will hold. If I cut this rope, this knot will hold. So if this was my repelling knot. Getting a little advanced here. So now I have a bowl in here. If this was my repelling knot and I put this here, I would put a safety loop here, and that way if this post gave, I would have this rope going to another tie point, which is, uh, if that was the case. And again, if this is confusing and I'm getting a little advanced, I'm just showing you different ways you can use your knots, so it's good to have knots. So if this was a safety line, what I'd want to do is I would hook a, a D-ring into this, and then I would get another tie point over here. So I have basically two tie points, because I don't want this thing to give. So I have a tie point here, and now I'm going to hook this, do a quick little figure right here. And then hook this into here. And now I have a secondary or a safety line. So if this breaks, which if I tied to that, I'd be a dummy because it would break. So if this breaks, though, and I'm down in the mountain, I have what's called a safety line to another tie point. So when this breaks, I'm not out of luck. I'm going to take a little, little harder fall, but I'm going to have a secondary tie point. And these are called safety lines. And the knots I used were figure eight, a bowline, and um, uh, this little, uh, it's called a butterfly knot. And, and again, to tie a butterfly knot, 
it's a little uh, takes a little practice and if you do it over the years so many times you kind of remember it but basically I, I lay my knot I lay it over here I do one loop and then the second loop goes in between the first two loops then I grab this front piece give me a little bit of room here and then that basically just wraps around my palm and comes out here and then I know I have a correct butterfly when I put tension on both these I should see two smooth ropes here and I should see an X or a cross here and that's how when I was talking about a couple of videos that you'll learn how to look at knots and know if they're tied correctly and when somebody says finishing a knot you want to make it look decent this knot is finished because I have my X clearly visible and I have my two parallel ropes right there clearly visible. So this knot is finished so anybody can do a visual check of this knot and know it's tied correctly. If I didn't finish it and I just did that, now when I look at this knot I can't tell if it's tied correctly very well because it's not finished. So to finish it I put tension on both of my ropes that I'm going to do. I'll adjust these in, make it look nice, make sure my two in the back are nice and straight. Make sure my X in the front is good, got a nice X. I'm gonna tighten it down, cinch it up, and now I have a good butterfly knot. This is a great knot for the middle of the rope knot. Technically, I could probably tie this knot right here. I could slip this over and repel off this rope or have a second repeller off this rope and have two repels going. So this is a butterfly knot. It's a little bit more complicated. I'll show you one more time real quick since I'm going over knots and tie points. Again, you lay it in your hand. I go one loop, the second loop goes in between the first two loops, so I have three loops. Now I take, give me a little looseness here on, on, that, on that front, the front one, and then I just tuck it under and around and pull it through. And then to finish it, I put tension and I visually check it for my X and for my two straight bars. And now I have a properly tied butterfly knot. But to untie the butterfly knot, I know it's military, everything's about kill and break and injure. Because the butterfly knot, this is his wings, you basically break the wings and then you pull that center loop out and that's how you untie the butterfly knot. So, uh, and again, I'm going to zoom in on this part right here so I can get a couple close knots so you can kind of see. Maybe I can see better. Um, so I'm going to try to keep my knot tying right there. So. Again, the bowling knot, probably the most, most versatile, most useful knot. The reason why the bowling is so good is because you can put weight on that line and then you can still untie it. So, again, the bowling knot, I lay it over, I do my twist. I take my running in and I go, the rabbit comes up the hole, runs around that tree, and then back down the hole. And it should look like that. And then when I tighten it up, that's my bowling. And again, I can put tension on this knot. And again, I can do this to where it loops over, to where it loops on top, or when I tie it, if I'm going around an object, I put it around the object and then I finish my little rabbit trick. Rabbit comes up the hole, around, down the hole. So that's for an object when I can't slide it over. I have to tie it on it. Now, the other good common knot is called figure eight. Very versatile, very good knot. Get up here and try to get this close here. Figure eight knot. Figure eight basically looks like a figure eight. So if I'm gonna do a figure eight knot in this, it looks like an eight. There's my figure eight knot. If I'm gonna do a double figure eight knot for my loop, I'm gonna take two ropes. Again, I'm gonna hang it around. And instead of just going straight through this loop, basically I go around and I twist to create that figure eight, and then I slide it through. And now I have a double figure eight, and this would be my tie point. This would be my D-ring point. This could be my repel point, and I could repel this rope. Basically, you want a loop that you can either put over something or around something. So, when I'm doing this figure eight here, and I'll step back just a little bit and show you how to make it bigger. 
If I want this loop this big when I'm finished, I tie my knot a little bit lower, I come around, I put an extra twist in here, and then I run that through. And now I have my figure eight knot with a nice loop that I can just throw over something, and now I can repel off this rope or this rope. The figure eight will hold either way, so I can repel off either rope. So the figure eight and the bowline are probably the two most common tile points that I've used. That's what we used to teach, that's what we used. Again, finish the knot. Make it look like a nice figure eight. A knot that's finished should be able to visually be looked at to see if it's correct. If my knot looks like this, it's still a figure eight knot, but how the hell can I tell? Okay, finish your knot to make it look like it's supposed to look for visual, visual check. Um, now, gets a little trickier when I'm doing it around something. If I want to use a figure eight around something, what I need to do is this is my repel end. This is going to be my tying end. First, I'm going to tie a figure eight loosely. I'm going to need a little bit longer. So I have my figure eight tied loosely. Now I'm going to take this, put it around my tree or whatever I'm tying to, and now I'm going to come back and I'm going to trace like in a water knot. Water knot's a really good knot too, two overhand knots. But I'm going to trace this figure eight knot. So wherever this rope goes that's already in the figure eight, I'm going to follow it with this rope to make me a figure eight. So it comes in there. So I'm following it there. It's got a wrap around here. I'm following the wrap. It comes up through here. I'm following the wrap. It comes around here. I'm following it just like a snake. And then it comes out through here. So I'm going to come out through here. And I didn't have enough rope to show you correctly. So I'll redo it. So again, I have my figure eight here. I have this rope here that I just put around the tree, so now I need to finish this figure eight. And I'm gonna trace the route of this rope. So this rope's going here. I'm following it. This rope comes around here, I'm following it. It comes up through here, I'm following it. There we go, we're making double everywhere. Still a single here, so I gotta come back around here to follow it. It goes back down through here, so I follow it through there. Now I have the figure eight I tied earlier that looks like a figure eight because it's finished, and now I can repel, but I've put a figure eight around a tree or a large tie-off point, a large rock, something, that I had to get the rope around. So you can't tie the, the, the bowline like the bowline I was tying and I was slipping over this end. And I could do a figure eight and slip it over this end. Let me untie this. If I wanted to tie a figure eight, I have my figure eight, I have my loop, I can do that. I can just throw it over here and then repel off these two. But again, if you have a point that you're tying off to that you can't slide up or over, then you need to tie it when it's on it. So that's figure eight. Uh, and now I'll get into a quick little webbing. They sell this webbing at most of your repel stores. It's stitched with high tensile uh, thread or string. It's very strong. This little webbing right here, I think, I don't know if it tells me what the 32K or 23KN. So this little string right here is a 23. It will hold 4,000 pounds. Very handy to have. They're easy to work with, easy to tie off. If I want to tie off on something, if I wanted to repel and my arm was a tie off point, I basically throw this around here, hook a D-ring in here or a rope, and I'm good to go. Normally I will just hook a D-ring in there, one, two, and now I hook my rope into my D-ring and I'm good to go and I have a tie off point. Very, very secure. Um, I, I like having the webbings, they're handy. This webbing isn't large enough to go around this pole to hook up the D-ring. So since I have multiple webbings, I'm going to hook these two up. Now they're hooked together. They're both the same strength and now I can just tie off to this and I can hook up. 
These are a lot easier than tying your knots. And basically, I repel off this just like I would normally. I run my rope through here, and I'm, I'm good to go. I can do, I, if I wanted to hook in a figure eight in here, I can hook my figure eight in here. Now I can tie. I can repel right off these two ropes here. So I have my webbing holding it. I have the, the D-ring here, which is a 24 or 25 kn. So it's 5,000 pounds. This is four or 5,000 pounds. My rope, depending on the rope I get, is going to be the same. So I don't really have, you know. The weakest link in the chain is the weakest part of your repel. So if my knot's bad, if my rope is chewed up because I've stepped on it and dirty, if my webbing is old and worn, if my D-ring's got nicks on it that's going to cut my rope, all those things will cause a repel to fail. So you want to make sure that, again, make sure all your links are as strong, or if you're aware of a weakest link, I would make that weakest link and the most if I had to use it, I'm going to use it to where it's going to be the least amount of damage or the least amount of stress or pressure. I might use my weak rope or a weak link for a secondary tie-off in case my primary fails. So I'm not putting pressure on it all the time, but I can go. These are really great for a secondary. I showed you how to tie the butterfly earlier. If I want to hook in a butterfly real quick, got my butterfly hook into the webbing now I have me a safety line or a repel line whatever I want so those are kind of basically the the most common type of uh, tie-off points again we got our bowling figure eight butterfly there's there's some other knots that you can use a little bit more advanced a Prusik for if you want to tie down safety and all that if I get enough hits on this and I get enough questions I'll do some more advanced stuff but this is just basic repelling Showed you how to put on a brake, how to brake. Uh, I didn't really go into the, the braking system uh, when, when you're braking. Uh, and I can cover that fairly quickly. So if you watched all three of these, you should be able to have a decent idea to go out there and get yourself killed. Uh, when you're braking, basically your hand is here and you never bring your hand up here. So braking is important to keep that elbow locked straight to the rear. So I'm feeding, I want this here, so when I clamp my hand, it pulls it to the center of my back. So I want to slide my hand out, clamp, and it slides it to the center of my back. And your braking is always done in the center of your back with your hand right there. That gives you a good break. It puts tension here, puts rope tension here, and it binds your D-ring up. And that's your brake. Uh, I didn't go over the... Uh, I guess I can get my face in here, not that it matters. Uh, I didn't go over the, uh, oh, I forgot what I was going to say. Breaking, oh. Uh, on, on the different tie-offs on the figure eight. Uh, but out of these three videos, what you should have got is basically how to tie your ranger seat and your Swiss seat. How to hook up the proper way using the standing end, not the running end. Learning the two ends of the rope, you have a standing end and a running end. Your, your running end is the loose end, your standing end is the tight end. So understanding that when you're tying knots, it helps understand what your standing end and what your running end is. Um, talked about the bowling knot, twist, loop, grab it up the hole, round the tree, down the hole. That's your bowling, very useful knot. I didn't go into safety knots a lot. A lot of people will put safety knots. So if I wanted to put a safety knot on here, I'd want to make my bowling knot a little bit bigger so I have more, more extra rope to work with. So as a rabbit runs around a tree, it's going to take a little loop, come out here. So I still have my bowling, but I have a lot more excess here. So I can do what's called a safety knot. And basically, if this knot gives, this knot will slide up and block it. Um, if you, again, if I get a lot of hits and I, and I want somebody who, you know, I get enough people that really want to understand it, I'll do a little bit more advanced stuff. But this is basic ranger seat, Swiss seat, locking up, how to tie off the tie off points, how to do an alternate, a quick safety line. If you wanted to put an alternate, we talked about the butterfly knot, the bowling knot, the figure eight knot. Um, using webbing, 
Um, if you want to look up the KN, again, I think it's, I want to say kilo nitro, something I can't, Newton, kilo Newton maybe. But, but it's, it's some sort of forest continuum, big scientific thing about how much pressure, poundage, and all that. But basically it converts to about 23 KN will get you four to 5,000 pounds, and that's more than enough. These are very light. They're usually only maybe six to eight, maybe 10 bucks. Uh, you can get them at REI or online. Uh, the thing I look for is the, uh, whether you want locking or not locking, this is a straight D-ring. This one's got a little bit of curve here. Some people like the, the curvature. Gives you a little bit wider opening when you're putting it in. Um, your webbing, I'm not sure what the webbing, I want to say they're 10 or 12 bucks, depending on how long they are. The longer they are, the more webbing it takes, the more they're going to cost. Um, and then you can get your rope. I, I didn't talk about whipping. If you want to go to my website on my horse channel, I talk about how to whip the end of a rope. This is basically just a whipping. You tie through. I use a parachute cord. That keeps it from raveling. It also gives me a good little tie point. It's solid. Um, so I, I usually whip all the end of my ropes. Some people will dip them. Matter of fact, I thought one of mine was dipped. This one's dipped. You put these uh, little plastic things, you heat them up and they shrink. It's like a shrink wrap. You can do that and then melt the edge. Uh, there's different ways to, to whip the end of a rope, but uh, I like using the parachute cord and whipping it. Uh, again, there's a video attached on my horse channel for that. And um, hopefully that helps. Uh, Ranger seat, Swiss seat, etc. I usually keep these tied in a nice figure eight. The more you tie a knot, the more you're going to be comfortable with it. You're going to see what it looks like when it looks wrong, when it's done right. It becomes second nature. And uh, so I always keep mine tied in a figure eight when I got them in the bag. But anyway, uh, that's basic repelling or introduction to repelling. Hope that helps. And uh, if you want to see more, or you got questions that you want to uh, have me cover more. Obviously, you're going to wear gloves when you're going down. You don't want to get rope burned. Um, but, all right, we'll end that there on basic repelling.